what's going on guys your boy terabyte reacts here back with another reaction and today we are going to take a look at little finger versus varus who played the better game this is a long video this video is 28 minutes so i want to see what this is all about this is actually by um i think it's by um nerd soup i think it is um uh, let's jump into this see what it's all about um in my opinion i really do believe that little finger played the better game um in the tv series in the tv series i think that even though it ultimately led to his death, you know, even though it ultimately led, led to his death, you know, it's, I think he did play the better game, you know, it's just that he got caught up. It's just, I think the only reason why Varys is still alive is because he actually, like, he knows when to get the hell out of Dodge, you know what I'm saying, Littlefinger, not so much, Littlefinger is the type of guy that's, that's like, listen man, whatever moves you make, I'm gonna try to be better, but I'm still gonna stay in place, even when I'm, even when I realize that I've been outplayed, I'm still gonna try to get out of the situation, you know what I'm saying, and he's always like, he's very manipulative, Varys, his intentions are a little bit more on the quote unquote good side, you know, in my opinion. So it's it's just a li it's better. You know what I'm saying? Little Finger versus Varys is like the two of them, you know, from their background coming from nothing, you know, what happened to Varys in his past, Little Finger, the same. Um, it's not the same thing that happened to both of them, but you know, it's very similar to situations, you know what I'm saying? Like them not having nothing and, and then coming up to become Lords, you know? So that's pretty, pretty interesting. So let's jump into this man here. What I think this is nerd soup. Let me take a good look. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Pretty sure it's nerd soup. Yeah. So nerd soup. Yeah, so let's look take a look at this video man and see what it's all about. Animations are hilarious. <laughs> Game of Thrones is properly titled. For all its magic, dragons, ice zombies, and resurrections, at its core, Game of Thrones is a political drama. And for the seven major houses, it truly has been a Game of Thrones, with each house staking their claim to their individual slice of the seven kingdoms. But for Peter Baelish and Lord Varys, it's been a game of shadows. But what do we have left once we abandon the lie? Chaos. A gaping pit waiting to swallow us all. Chaos isn't a pit. It's a ladder. Chaos is a ladder. When playing the Game of Thrones, attributes such as knowledge, cunning, and ambition are the determining factors of one's success. Lord Peter Baelish has an abundance of all three. No character throughout the entire series has been able to play the game quite as well as Littlefinger. His vast knowledge and ability to manipulate the other players enables him to orchestrate a series of events in which he is able to take complete advantage of. Everything that Littlefinger does is thoroughly thought out and planned with everything accounted for. If something unexpected happens, Littlefinger's ability to adapt and adjust is second to none. To understand what drives Peter Baelish to such depths, Look no further than his upbringing, and more importantly, how he was perceived by the Highborn Lords. Littlefinger came from a small house, but was fostered at Riverrun due to Peter's father's relationship with Lord Hoster Tully, whom he served during the War of the Nine Penny Kings. It was during this time he met Catelyn, Liza, and Edmure Tully. Edmure nicknamed him Littlefinger due to his short stature and place of birth on the Finger Peninsulas. Littlefinger began to fall for Catelyn, and he was determined to be with her, even though he would never be considered as a suitable match for someone so highborn. He even goes as far as to challenge Catelyn's betrothed, Brandon Stark, the heir to Winterfell. This proved unwise as he was badly beaten and Catelyn had to beg Brandon to spare his life. After recovering from his near-fatal wound, Littlefinger was sent home to the Fingers. Brandon Stark was later killed by the Mad King, Aerys Targaryen, and Catelyn would go on to marry his brother, Ned Stark. These events most likely ignited Peter's aspirations. 
he even embraced the derogatory nickname Littlefinger as a reminder of how far he has come. After the events of Robert's Rebellion had concluded, Lysa was wed to John Arryn, Lord of the Vale. Lysa was always in love with Peter, and he used this to manipulate her. Lysa convinced Lord Arryn to take Peter into his services, and he was eventually named Master of Coin. From here, he begins to build his wealth, which to him equals power. It is also during this time that Littlefinger begins bleeding the crown financially, as part of his greater plan of chaos to which he can exploit. The Master of Coin finds the money, the king and the hand spend it. One of the first scenes in Game of Thrones is the funeral for Jon Arryn, the Lord of the Eyrie and the Hand of the King to Robert Baratheon. Littlefinger convinces Lysa to poison Jon Arryn. This causes Robert to travel north and offer the position of Hand of the King to Ned Stark. He then has her send a letter to her sister Cat, blaming it on the Lannisters, starting a feud between two of the most powerful houses in Westeros. The first move we see him make is telling Cat that the Valerian steel blade used by Bran's assailant belongs to Tyrion, further escalating the tensions between Stark and Lannister, while also gaining the trust of Lord Eddard. He begins to feed Ned information that will lead him to find the truth about Jaime and Cersei. He also points him in the right direction when it comes to Robert's bastards in King's Landing. When Ned finally learns the truth, Littlefinger urges him to rule the kingdom as Lord Protector with him at his side. All of the power is yours, you need only reach out and take it. Make peace with the Lannisters. Release the imp. Wed your daughter to Joffrey. And if Joffrey becomes a problem, they can expose him and put Renly into power. When Ned refuses, he turns on him and shows his loyalty to the crown. By doing this, it almost guarantees that civil war will take place in Westeros and that he will be in the crown's good graces as he continues his plan. In season two, Littlefinger is sent by Tyrion to act as an envoy to Catelyn in order to parlay in exchange of Arya and Sansa for Jaime. He then supplants the idea of Cat releasing Jaime for her daughters. When Renly is murdered, Littlefinger quickly brokers an alliance between the Tyrells and the Lannisters to save King's Landing from Stannis. After the Battle of the Blackwater, he is given Harrenhal for his efforts, making him one of the most powerful lords in Westeros. You honor me beyond words, your grace. I shall have to acquire some sons and grandsons. <laughs> he now has a status high enough for a future marriage with Liza Arryn, the protector of the Vale. Before leaving for the Eyrie in Season 3, Littlefinger turns his attention towards Sansa, knowing how valuable she is. Littlefinger finds out that Varys and Lady Olenna plan to marry Sansa to Loras Tyrell. He then foils those plans by tipping off the Lannisters. He then joins forces with Lady Olenna in Season 4 to orchestrate the death of Joffrey and help Sansa escape. Tyrion is accused of killing the king, which leaves the Lannister family in turmoil. Littlefinger also hired the dwarves that performed at the wedding, ensuring conflict between Joffrey and Tyrion before the king is poisoned. This move puts Tommen, a boy king, on the Iron Throne, and causes Cersei to spiral out of control. Marcellus been sold like livestock, and now you want to ship me off to Highgarden and steal my boy, my last boy. Marjorie will dig her claws in, you will dig your claws in, and you'll fight over him like beasts until you rip him apart. I will burn our house to the ground before I let that happen. This also takes Tyrion out of the fold, thus freeing up Sansa to be wed. He smuggles Sansa out of the capital and brings her to the Vale. Back at the Eyrie, Littlefinger begins his mentoring of Sansa on how to play the game and rids himself of Liza Arryn by throwing her off of the moon door. Littlefinger is now Lord Protector of the Vale, Lord of Harrenhal, while still holding the key to the north, setting him up as one of the most powerful men in the kingdom. In Season 5, Littlefinger secretly marries Sansa Stark to Ramsay Bolton. The Lannisters consider this treason and ask Littlefinger to take back Winterfell for the crown. And if you succeed? Name me Warden of the North. Littlefinger is forced to change his plans in Season 6 when Sansa Stark escapes from the Boltons and reunites with the resurrected Jon Snow at Castle Black. Instead of taking the North from the Boltons, Littlefinger must now convince Rob and Arryn to align with the remaining Starks in their quest to take back Winterfell from the Boltons. He succeeds and the Knights of the Vale prove to be the deciding factor during the Battle of the Bastards. The Starks take back Winterfell and Littlefinger's goal of taking the Iron Throne hinges on the newly crowned King in the North. Good job. But let's talk about the real puppet master. Lord Varys <laughs> is arguably the most mysterious player in Game of Thrones. His official title is the Master of Whisperers, though he is disparagingly referred to as the Spider due to his vast network of spies and informants that span across two continents. In contrast to his malevolent counterpart Peter Baelish, Varys doesn't play the game for himself. He plays for peace and stability in the right. realm, and claims to be the one person with power who actually fights for the innocent. 
In his own words, it's the innocents who always suffer. Before he was the most feared spy master in the Seven Kingdoms, Varys was an orphaned boy living in the streets of Lys, one of the free cities off the coast of Essos. Born a slave, he spent most of his childhood traveling with a troop of actors across the free cities of Essos. He served the actors until he was sold to a mysterious sorcerer. During one of the sorcerer's magical rituals, Varys essentially became the sorcerer's guinea pig. He was given a potion that made him unable to speak or move, but he was fully aware of what was happening. He was effectively paralyzed, but he could still feel the pain. The sorcerer emasculated Varys and left him to die in the streets of Lys, but Varys was determined to live. He began begging, stealing, and selling his body to survive, and quickly became an exceptional thief. After starting a pickpocket business with his friend Illyrio Milpatis, he learned that information is the most valuable commodity. Together, they founded a group of spies that Varys would later refer to as his little birds. As his reputation grew, he eventually found himself as a member of the Small Council to King Aerys Targaryen II. In Season 1, Episode 5, The Wolf and the Lion, it is revealed that Varys has been secretly planning to restore the Targaryen dynasty with the help of his friend, Illyrio. Illyrio is a wealthy and powerful trader that operates in the free city of Pentos, and he was secretly housing the Targaryen siblings, Viserys and Daenerys, for several years. Illyrio was the one who successfully arranged the marriage between Daenerys and the Dothraki horse lord, Khal Drogo thus granting the Targaryen siblings the army they would need to invade the Seven Kingdoms. Illyria warns Varys that they must delay the conflict between the Starks and the Lannisters that was instigated by Littlefinger. But it is too late, and the war between the North and the South presumes without a Targaryen invasion. While the War of the Five Kings wages on in Westeros, Varys employs his vast spy network to keep Daenerys safe in Essos. He also advises Joffrey to blame Barristan Selmy for King Robert's death, knowing that Barristan's pride and honor would lead him to join Daenerys. Tyrion tells Daenerys in Season 5 that Varys is probably the main reason that she was not assassinated by Robert Baratheon. After Tyrion is named Hand of the King in Season 2, Varys gets the upper hand on the young Lannister by discovering his secret concubine, Shay. Initially, he uses Shay as leverage over Tyrion, but he soon learns that Tyrion would make a better ally than a foe. The two characters gradually form a partnership. With Stannis Baratheon on the verge of attack, Varys helps Tyrion plan his ingenious defense of King's Landing, while also relaying rumors of Stannis Baratheon's conversion to the Lord of Light. After the successful Lannister victory at the Battle of the Blackwater, Tywin returns to the capital and Tyrion is no longer Hand of the King, and Varys must now strengthen the chance of a successful Targaryen invasion without the help of his powerful ally. One of his first moves is to convince Ross, one of Littlefinger's prostitutes, to secretly spy on Littlefinger. Ross agrees to this arrangement and eventually warns Varys of Littlefinger's plan to remove Sansa Stark from the capital and take her to the Vale. Now Varys has a similar plan with Sansa in mind. He wants to unite both House Stark and House Tyrell against the throne, thus keeping the peace until Daenerys is ready to invade. He attempts to arrange a marriage between Sansa Stark and Loras Tyrell, but his plan is thwarted by Littlefinger. By the beginning of Season 4, Varys is reluctantly forced to change his plans when Tyrion is accused of murdering King Joffrey. He knows that Tyrion did not kill the king, but he will be executed all the same. Varys also knows that Tyrion is too valuable to let die, and would make a great ally to Daenerys. When Varys is ultimately called to testify at Tyrion's trial, he gives a damning testimony and provides convincing evidence of Tyrion's apparent guilt, strengthening the case against Tyrion and guaranteeing his execution. Of course, this was all part of the plan. The night before Tyrion is supposed to be executed, Jaime and Varys smuggle Tyrion to safety and set him on a boat to Essos. But before Tyrion escapes, he finds his lover Shay sleeping in Tywin's bed. Enraged by Shay's betrayal, Tyrion murders his father. In a matter of minutes, Varys drastically improved the chances for a successful Targaryen invasion, two birds with one stone. With Tyrion's escape and Tywin's murder, the Lannisters' position was severely weakened. They lost two of their most important and skilled players, one to the enemy and one to death. Tyrion would go on to become Hand of the Queen to Daenerys, and Tywin would go on to really fart himself to death. <laughs> Little nod to the book readers. In Season 6... 
Now openly working for Daenerys Targaryen, Varys and Tyrion work to stabilize Marine and secure Daenerys' hold on Slaver's Bay. Varys discovers that the masters of Astapar, Yunkai, and Volantis are funding the Sons of the Harpy, and Tyrion successfully negotiates a truce between the four great cities. Varys then leaves Marine to forge a Martell Tyrell Targaryen alliance, leaving the Lannisters completely isolated by the start of Season 7. Varys has perfectly positioned himself and his allies to conquer the Seven Kingdoms and ultimately bring peace to the realm, the one and only thing that Varys claims to fight for. So I think we can both agree, I think Varys is the better player, you think Littlefinger is the better player, but we can both agree that they're the two best. Out of all the characters we've seen on Game of Thrones, they've had their hands on mostly everything that's happened. What sucks about season six and now moving forward is that we don't see them together anymore. Those are some of the best scenes of the whole show, yeah. them conversing. And that's one of like the better changes from the books to the show as them conversing and having more of a relationship together. Yeah, I think it would be interesting to see a Littlefinger point of view chapter, but not Varys, because still nobody knows what he's thinking. If we knew what Varys was thinking, it would take away from that mystery. A Littlefinger point of view chapter would be like just all over the place, <laughs> just overanalyzing yeah, every situation and trying yeah. to go. Varys would just be like quiet. <laughs> it'd be the line every it would be it would just be Varys and then the next chapter right after it <laughs> just him silently thinking so if we go to their upbringings i think Varys's uh, ascension to the small council is more impressive because Varys was born with nothing he was born an orphan in lease he basically had to fend for himself and the fact that he became such a reputable spy master that he was able to ascend to the small council i think littlefinger got a little lucky being born in the fingers. Well, I think both of their uh, ascensions are, they're very impressive, but what's the most impressive thing about them is they use, but they both developed a particular skill set that helped them elevate to that position, where you have Varys, his ability to survive, and by surviving on secrets and information, which piqued the interest of the king, where Littlefinger was, he knew he had to play the game in a, to build relationships and know people and play them that way. That's how he gained his position on the small council. The most important relationship in Littlefinger's life was the relationship between him and Lysa Tully. That, that he unknowingly developed the most valuable relationship to himself as a child. He never, he never could have foreseen the fact that her obsession with him would be so important in his plans. That's well, why I say Littlefinger was a bit more lucky than Varys, because Varys had to start playing the game earlier. His father is best friends with Holster Tully. He agrees to take in Littlefinger at his home. And then he develops these relationships with these two extremely rich and powerful women. They shaped him. It could have been all well and good. They could right, have been friends. Right. And he it's the had... events that happened that at is true. the Riverlands that made lucky. him so hungry for power. The thing that I think drives dri drove him the most crazy was he was unable to be with Catelyn yes. because he was so lowborn. Now, and do, you I think do you think he really loved her? Because I feel like in season two, when he goes to see her um, I don't the Stormlands... Think, I don't think he loves her anymore. Right. I think he did, and that experience and the fact that he couldn't marry her drove him that development as Littlefinger It, it really we know shaped today. what he is. Yeah, right. It yeah. shaped him. But then, you know, going to season one, the fact that he, he understands that Lysa's obsessed with him and will basically do anything that he says to, to kill John Aaron, to bring Ned to the south, it was just perfect. The whole of season one is his doing. He basically could have been a writer on the show. They could have credited uh, Peter Baelish because he basically <laughs> pushes yes. every button. Right? He's basically the writer of the whole story, man. I mean, he convinces the cat, uh, tells uh, Catelyn that it was Tyrion's dagger, furthers the conflict, has Lannister and Stark at their throats. One of the best things he does is the way he reacts. He's fine. I think he truly is fine with Ned staying alive, no matter what Ned. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. That's why I said that. Um, at the beginning, I was saying that I I feel ge um, genuinely feel that Littlefinger played the game better because um, he's basically um, the reason why season one happened. He's the reason why season two happened. He's the reason why everything has happened pretty much up until this that except for the White Walkers, of course. Everything that happened, all the conflict, the, the 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 war of the five kings, the um, the um Ned's death, everything major, he had his hands. I think the only thing really major that um that happened, um, I think there's a couple of things he's not directly. I mean, he is directly, um, indirectly, um, responsible for the red wedding he's indirectly responsible for um what was it 
well, he's directly responsible for a lot of things, man, that happened in the series because of him starting the whole, the, the relationship, the war between the Lannisters and the Starks, everything. It's crazy. There's a lot of things he's responsible for. Some things indirectly, of course. He's not responsible for John's death. Um, he's in no way responsible for that. Like, he never influenced that at all. Um, so everything major, man, up until, cause I mean, even, even, um, he was still playing the game, even when, um, he gave, you know, when he, when he gave Sansa to, Ra to Ramsey, he was still playing the game cause he went back to King's Land and he had that conversation with Cersei and was like, oh, I'm going to make, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. All you had to do is name me Warden of the North. And that was crazy to see that he would go that far. You know, it's he's very, very indirectly responsible for a lot of things, but also directly responsible for a lot of things. Because he set things, he set the story in motion. For the TV series, None of Ned wouldn't have died if he didn't betray Ned. He's directly responsible for Ned's death. Because from the moment everything that transpired in season that season one, he was manipulating everything, everything. Um, I think he's. I think he's. He, I mean, he's the one that told that let um, Liza kill um, John Aaron. I mean, when I learned about that, that was very surprising, man. I mean, the guy is just. And that's why we all wanted him dead. I mean, maybe, maybe not everybody, but I know for the majority of people that White Gamer don't want a little finger dead because he was just, he just has, we know what he's responsible for. We know what he's responsible for. He, he's responsible indirectly for the, for the Red Wedding because he set those things in motion. He let the war start between the Starks and the Lannisters that caused the Lannisters to end up um, siding with the phrase and, 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 um, ordering the death of the Starks. So, I mean, so much, you know what I'm saying? So let's jump back into it. Hear what he's saying. Ned does, he becomes better off. If Ned does do what he did, he betrays Ned and he's in good graces with the Lannisters. If Ned does follow Littlefinger's advice and becomes Lord Protector to Joffrey, Littlefinger's right there with him. Yeah. The biggest mistake that <laughs> Ned made was probably not trusting Varys over Littlefinger. Yeah. Because I think Varys truly, if we, if we are meant to believe now that Varys truly wants peace and stability in the realm, then that was the person to go with. Varys always says nobody trusts the eunuch. Because Varys is so mysterious, he's, he's he's terrifying, really. When you when you see him manipulating people in certain scenes, well, Varys and Littlefinger both share that scene with Ross. They both share individual scenes, and they're both terrifying in these scenes. I would say Littlefinger yeah. more so. But Varys's game initially is to stall the conflict between the Starks and the Lannisters, so that Viserys can invade the Seven Kingdoms with the Dothraki horde. But he fails at this. Yeah, I mean, with the you say that it wasn't necessary. If if he wants peace and stability, why get rid of Robert Baratheon? It goes back to before that with Rhaegar, that Rhaegar would have been the best choice, and I think that... And I think he was working towards Rhaegar. I think he was trying to expose King Aerys by convincing him to go to the tourney of Harrenhal to strengthen Rhaegar's position. But going to Robert, I think he tells Ned Robert's life is in danger, that Cersei and the Lannisters are trying to kill him. I think he realized that Robert was such a negligent, terrible king, he allowed all these awful people to come into power. Cersei, Littlefinger, Pycelle, all of these people clawing and gripping uh, the throne. Varys knew that our best decision is to put this kid, this pet project, basically, that me and Illyrio have on the throne. It's a risk for Varys because it's an unknown. It puts all, I guess, blind faith into the series, even though he knows... What we don't see is that he's been protecting these Targaryen kids for 17 years before the show starts. He, him and Illyrio are basically, they kept them alive. Viserys went mad because he became so impatient with Khal Drogo that he just lost his mind. I don't buy it. I think it's just taking time bomb waiting to happen. I mean, even before Daenerys and Khal, uh, Khal Drogo are married, you hear the things he says to her. These awful things that no sane man will say. I'll let the whole, right. the whole uh, tribe fuck you and their horses too. Probably the wrong decision to support Viserys. <laughs> yeah, so he, he, he really, luck fell into his favor and he was able, going forward, to... But when Viserys is taken off the table, you see him take steps into continuing to protect Daenerys. He's still keeping an eye on her because that's the thing. When you compare Varys's and Littlefinger's spy network, Varys has the better spy network. 
He's the one with more information. He's the one that tells Littlefinger that Catelyn is coming south with concerns about Bran Stark being thrown That's out the true. window. So even Littlefinger, I think, admits in season one that Varys has the better spy network because Littlefinger is, his spies are very ready to turn on him because he's so ruthless and cruel. He really is a, a sociopath. That's the difference with Varys. Varys forms partnerships and friendships like he does with Tyrion in season two, which turns out to be very beneficial to Daenerys li in season five. Yeah, all of Littlefinger's part, uh, friendships are one-sided. <laughs> yes, he's just abusing people. If you're Littlefinger's friend, he's fucking you over somehow. So you would say the initial <laughs> Varys plan was get Viserys to invade the Seven Kingdoms against Robert Baratheon. If you're saying he should, Ned should have listened to him, Varys is trying to help Ned, but that kind of contradicts what he's trying to do. Because he, want, he wants conflict, but a slow-burning conflict. I think Varys wanted Cersei gone. That's what he truly wanted. He with didn't Cersei, want. He wanted Cersei Robert. Yeah, with all that gone though, and Rob and Ned, he knows Ned's the. Say what we want about him playing the game. He's, he's good, a great military commander. Good for the realm, and he knows what to do, how to keep Robert in check. So by helping Ned get rid of Cersei, that's helping Rob. That's helping the kingdom. That's not helping uh, Viserys's plans to come and invade. Yes, but Viserys eventually dies, and as the show progresses, he does put specific players into Daenerys' court. Like, um, he convinces Joffrey to blame Barristan for King Robert's death. This leads Barristan to join Daenerys and Essos, which was a great move by Varys, because it's giving her an experienced advisor, somebody that is going to protect her and push her in the right direction. He's very, he's very laissez-faire with his philosophy, and I don't think you can discredit him for putting, for betting on the right hand. It's, it's, again, Even it's though it is very lucky. Very lucky. I mean, to contrast that with Littlefinger, I would say that Littlefinger is playing the game against idiots. That he, The people that he's manipulating, Cersei, Lysa, Catelyn, Ned, these people are terrible at the game. And then you talk about luck. Well, he was lucky to develop this relationship with Lysa Aaron. That's, that's the most important relationship that he has. But he uses Lysa as a tool for his own self-gain. I, I know she's not the... And Ned. Yeah, but I'm saying... Like, and Catelyn. Yes, I know. I'm saying, but he uses... And Cersei. I'm trying to... <laughs> you brought up Liza like that. They're all very dumb. Yes, but then he uses that to help. It's That's part of the manipulation game is you find people you know you can control, make it for your own advantage, and he did it beautifully. The thing is, people say Varys got lucky with Daenerys. Well, I'll, I'll just counter that by saying Littlefinger got really lucky too, man. Yes, he but got then he built, he built off of that. Yes. Varys is more to the well, side. Well, Varys has too, because I think the move to put Barristan in Daenerys' court... Um, I mean, I mean, what's when more... When Tyrion is accused of killing Joffrey, Varys, the wheels are spinning, saying, oh, I'm going to get this guy the fuck out of here. I'm going to get him exiled, because I'm going to testify against him, in, ensure his execution, and then smuggle him out. I wish I could bring the book into this. That's did D&D help you out on that one? Oh, D&D did help me out because he's kind of forced By to do Jamie. it in the book, yeah. And it, even in the show, they kind of imply, oh, it's a, it's a... You never told me why you set me free. Your brother asked me to. Would have said no. <laughs> Refuse the Kingslayer, a dangerous proposition. Not as dangerous as releasing me. 